Winters special topic webinar on network use in Atlas TI. My name is Susanna Friese and I will now walk you through the basics of what you need to know and the practicalities of how to actually do it in Atlas TI. So I first provide an overview of the topics we are going to talk about. So it's a first kind of a theoretical introduction on what you need to know. Uh, then we move over to Atlas TI and I show you how to link objects and how to create new relations. And then I will introduce hyperlinks to you and show you the idea of what it means before we move on to Atlas again to show you the practical side. And our last topic here is the analytical capabilities of network use. Uh, due to some new functionality that um, was added now in version 7 of Atlas TI. Here we see an example network view. You see a number of objects here in this network view. So these are codes and you see all the user defined colors that show up here in the network view. This is a memo. So you see the memo symbol here. We have some primary documents as nodes in here as well. So all of these objects you see are called nodes in a network view. And you can link nodes to each other. You see we can link them via named relations. You can also link certain objects just by normal links. And I will talk more about that uh, difference between named and unnamed relations. You see also here this is a red thick line linking these two codes and we have a similar line so that also points out that we can define how a link should look like so that's what I will show you when I show you how to create new relations or modify existing one for that matter. So it's the first basic concept you need to be familiar with it's about directed and non-directed links and we can link two codes which with each other it's different between, it's associated with, we can't really define a direction. So we get two arrows pointing to the right and left hand side. These are called symmetric uh, relations or links. Um, we need to know that when we define our new um, relations, we need to define properties. So if you want a non-directed relation, you need to select symmetric. Here we have a directed relation, so it's pointing to a direction. Um, it's argue or it's reason for, it's consequence of, uh, and so on. So a link where you can clearly point uh, to a direction. And here the term is transitive. And you can remember that quite easily from transit, train, transport, all of that goes into a particular direction. So that helps you to remember that property if you define relations. Yeah, the transitive one is a directed link. And the Atlas also di uh, uh, distinguishes between strong and weak links. Yeah, we see here some objects are linked to each other just via a line, so a memo to supercode in this case. It's just a line, it's not named, and we have these two codes linked to each other, which is associated with. So this is a strong link because we can name it. So all objects that you can only link and not name, they're called weak links. And here we see an example between memo and codes. And let's move on to some other examples here between strong and weak links. Here we see a strong link between two quotations. And you can also make visible your coding in a sense. So we have a video quotation that's linked to a code. So that code is actually coding quotation 6, 7 here. Um, and that's a weak link. Yeah, it's just indicating okay that quot quotation belongs to that code. So we have strong links between two codes. So if I move one um, page back here, yeah we have a strong link between two codes and we can also define strong links between two quotations. And these are actually the hyperlinks. Yeah so if you talk more about hyperlinks remember we have strong links here between uh, two quotations. Another weak link network, again just showing the coding uh, of that code explanation wrong expectation. Um, and we can just visualize all the quotation linked 
to that coat. And another <coughs> um, example would also be if you visualize a coat family. This would also be um, weak links if you have only the members of the family. So then Atlas distinguishes um, yeah, between nodes in their relation and we have talked also about links, so these are the lines. So if you have a named link, um, uh, then Atlas calls this relation. Yeah, so we can clearly express the nature of the relationship and we have seen that works between two quotes and two quotations. And here we see the standard um, relations that Atlas already provides if you install the software. Um, and then you can add and modify those kind of links. So we have this associated with as part of its course of contradicts is a known name and its property of. These are the standard links for code code relations. Um, Atlas offers a second set of standard relations for hyperlinks and I show you when we at that point in the software. We have three labels that we can define. So the, the relation name itself and two alternative labels and the width and the color and then the attribute. So, so far I only kind of told you about symmetric and transitive links. Atlas also has something like an asymmetric link. It, it looks like, or well, it's like a transitive link, so it points into one direction, but you cannot uh, utilize in a hierarchic type of nature. Transitive uh, relations, you can utilize those in the Kirby tool um, via the semantic operators. So that's the difference uh, between symmetric, uh, transitive and, and asymmetric. They look um, the same in a network view, um, but in terms of showing a code hierarchy in the code forest code tree or uh, querying the relation, you can't uh, query the asymmetric relations via the down operator, for example. So that's the difference between the two. But then if you're new to it, I mean, just um, stick with symmetric and transitive, directed, non-directed uh, relations. Um, it's in enough new things to learn. So start out with uh, those two before you venture into um, also the, the third uh, option here. So I've opened Atlas TI now, and this is the um, example project that actually is um, delivered with Atlas TI, um, but in a in a special state here. Uh, in case you don't know the project, I it's under Help Quick Tour, and it's uh, stage one. It's the uncoded project, and stage two is a coded one. So you can always refer to it uh, for examples. In stage two, it's coded. We have networks. Um, and you can take a look at this as an example also in terms of coding, how it's structured and the memos actually offer a number um, of um, ideas here on, on what to do with memos. So you have some instructional information here in this project as, as well. So this is a special one called uh, Without Linked Codes. Um, so where I actually threw out um, all the links to show you um, how the linking works. So open the code manager by clicking here on the codes button and this is the uh, single column view so save some space on the screen so we see all the codes here with the ground and this density number um, behind the name so the ground and this is the frequency this code has been used 24 times and it's not linked yet to any other codes so we have all the arrows here yeah so none of these code is linked yet yeah, so now I'm selecting four coats and just taking a different color. You know that that bright green actually works quite nicely in network view, not that nicely in um, the code manager. Um, but so that's just an indication that uh, you might want to choose colors or select colors also depending on where you are in your project. You see that. Um, green shows up very nice in network views. So now I 
uh, added these four codes to the network view by clicking on that network view button here. So I close this window now so to have some more space on my video screen here. And you can take these nodes here, all code nodes here, um, I move them around, position them where you want them to be. So if I click on a code node, you see that red dot appear here on the top. So now I can drag it to another code. So as soon as I let go, the standard list of relation opens. And that's the new one is signed for, that's not a standard um, relation. So um, you see that shows a standard relation plus any new relation you will create um, over time. So let's take the is associated one, which is a non-directed symmetric relation. So I link that one now using a transitive relation like as part of. Yeah. So now we have as part of, as a directed relation, and as property of what's an asymmetric one. Let's use that one. As well, so it looks like a transitive one, so we don't see any difference, but you can utilize them for um, analytical purposes, for example, in the query tool. So now, link this last one, but this time I say, well, none of these relations really fits. I open the relation editor to create a new one. Yeah, so here we see now the existing. Uh, relations here and uh, then we can enter a new relation by clicking on the edit button new relation in case you open the window and you don't see the edit and file option here just kind of twiggly a bit around the window if you just move it here a bit then that menu pops up so I click enter new relation and I do one um, called this reason for so we need an internal ID, that is the ID Atlas uses to um, distinguish the relation. The default is capital letters, you don't have to use capital letters, but let's kind of stick um, with the default here. Um, th this is a unique ID that needs to be different for each of these um, relations, so you can't have two uh, relations with REI. The labels could be the same, but the IDs need to be different. So start, I start with the menu text is reason for. So this is going to show here now as menu text. Then I do have the option to display this label in a different way. So it can be, yeah, we have three options, label one, label two, or the menu text. So it's kind of a convention you will have to think about how you want to do this. We can also say, well, maybe I sometimes don't want to have any name there. Before, yeah, But label two, um, I sometimes work in different languages and uh, you know, my language, native language is German, so it's Grundfür, would be the German equivalent here if you are Spanish or Chinese or, or whatever, um, Portuguese, French, uh, whatever language you're working with, you can use the label two always for you the second language you are working uh, for and then you can um, choose um, whatever is appropriate for the study or for the presentation you're preparing whatever so let's make that a bit thicker now and choose a different color yeah choose red here can be solid or a dashed line and is reason for well that's a transitive relation it's pointing in a direction then we have this preferred layout direction basically you can ignore that it's kind of like by by the standard when you pop up a network uh, should it be um, shown from left to right right to left up down down up um, that's not for the safe networks but you will see later if you open a network on a code that would be um, how it would be displayed um, but as most of the time you will move these codes with your mouse anyway, um, that's not so important to, to consider here, but the formal property is important. And now if you want, you can actually comment the entire
higher relation, not that particular link, but the um, describe the relation, what you mean. So now it's added here uh, to the list of relation and I click OK. And you see now it's shown in my network view. I can actually click on these relations. I have a context menu. I can also flip it if that was the wrong way around. Um, I can also cut it if I don't want to have it anymore. I can, so you see you have to hit it and click right or change relation if I want a different one. Yeah. And actually I know cut all the relation. You could actually also use the cut symbol up here. Yes, yeah, so you can always work with these toolbars here as well. And you've, you will probably find different ways. This is actually the link option here. You can also use that option to get the link. And actually, we'll do this now, but not for linking two objects to each other. I will link all of these three codes now. So I mark them. You could also use the control key to do that. And now I can't just take one of the red dots. I need to use that um, link nodes button here from the toolbar. And then I get three, four, or five lines, depending on how many objects I have marked. And click on my happiness joy code and say, um, they are all property of whatever. Yeah, and then if, if it not all of, uh, you don't want to use the same relation for all of these, you can always say, well, I want to change um, that relation here. <coughs> To something different. So now I have shown you uh, how to link codes to each other. So, but we have seen we can actually also add more objects to a network view. You can actually do it by drag drop from the margin area uh, or from the uh, managers. We can also use the menu option here and um, actually I have to move this a bit. Yeah, so it's on the screen, import notes. Yeah, we already have said that um, these objects are called notes. So we can add codes, code families, memos, memo families, other network views, basically as placeholders. So you can kind of, and once when your screen is out of space, you can um, kind of, yeah, save it as, save it and then um, kind of continue your network views if, if, if it's getting growing, if it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So we can add primary documents, primary document families and quotations. So all objects basically that you have in Atlas TI, you can add to this network. Let's add here um, some memos. No, that's my control key. So import. So now I've added these memos to my network view and the linking is exactly in the same way. But now if I link, I don't get a menu to select um, a relation. So we have a weak link here. The linking works in the same way, but we um, cannot uh, select a relation. That only works for co code and for um, quotation quotations. So I can add quotations um, here also via my import nodes. Menu and another, another window. No, uh, uh, I said yes. Um, and yeah, so once you maybe you remember some ideas of some quotations that you want to include in the network view, you can add quotations. But I show you another way. You can also add these three quotations here from that uh, code here. Be a bit careful with that if you have 16 quotations linked to the code. Well, if you use what I'm doing now, import uh, neighbors quotations and whoosh, you have lots of quotations in your network view. Now it's only three. I see it here is the name. And um, and we have now these three quotations in here. So if I link now two quotations to each other, same way as we did before, we also get the 
relation list of relation here but now you see these are different relations we have continued contradicts criticizes discusses expands all of these are standard relations here quotes is one i have um, created previously but here you see these standard relations so now we actually choose contradicts here same behavior you can right click cut or you can also edit and show me that um, comment on this particular link yeah so this is not a comment for the relation overall but a comment for that particular link of these two quotations and there's all other objects that are commented also here um, the relation name he gets this tilde sign so we see immediately that we have written a comment for it and explained why these two quotations contradict each other yeah so now here we see some weak links and some strong links named and non-named relations Now I remove this quotation from the network view and we have two options here, remove from view and delete quotations, the same for codes, remove from view, delete code. Please be careful with the delete, you will be warned anytime you delete something, but if we delete a code note from this network view, this code is going to disappear from your entire hermeneutic unit. So if you want to remove something from a network view, please use the remove from view option. So I want to show you some other dis some display options now. I'm making some room here. Um, I go. I don't want to go through all of these. Just uh, uh, through a few in the others, you can just play out whether you want to have three D notes and rounded notes and borders and stuff like that. So that's something for you to play with. Um, I want to show the quotation verbosity. You can only have IDs if the IDs are enough and you want to only have the quotations in here or you want um, the full text, that's the other extreme, of the quote. That of course means um, yeah, you need a bit of space. But basically, you can also grab these boxes and resize them. You can do that with all of these codes if you want to have don't have one have on two lines have them on one you also don't have to show the groundedness and density if you don't want to this is the extended code label so if you only want the code names and not the numbers yeah so individual resizing um, is possible um, let me link on the resize is possible starting here in version 7 resize the notes as you want to have them but bringing in the full content of quotation you would do that with uh, exceptional few uh, quotations you see you need uh, some space here um, on your screen I sh actually take this away now um, I do the ID only because you can if you want also from a network view access the data in context So we have the option here, display in context. And now Atlas actually loads in the document and does show the quotation in context, as you see here on the screen. Yeah, so you can actually access the data um, behind here. We can also list all the quotations for a particular code and then click on it and Atlas will show you yeah, whatever is highlighted here, will show you the coded segment in context. And as always, um, yeah, it's nice to have big screens when working with Atlas. I have reduced it now for the um, yeah, optimal sites for YouTube uh, video recordings. Um, so it's a bit small here and there, but I think at home you have a bit more space so you can actually see it all side by side. <coughs> Yeah, so we have looked at those display options and uh, now I show you the label options. So we have a tab been showing you that we can define label 1, label 2 and the menu text and that's the link display option here. It's off my screen now. 
so link display and now I show the label one. As a standard labels here are um, just some symbols that you find on your on your keyboard, um, but you can define it the way you want to have it. Just be consistent that label one is always none, or label one is always a symbol, label two is always your second language you're going to work with, but maybe so we can actually see the one I have created um, is reason four. Yeah, so now you have here the, the, uh, the German wording, and now we do the menu label, and we have is reason four, yeah, the English text. And again, the full names for the other relations. Now yeah, think about some conventions that make sense for you for level one, level two, and then the menu text. So now I show you actually how you export that picture into another application. You can print the network as graphic file and then you have various options as yeah, PNG, BMP, TIFF, GIF, JPEG, EMF and then you can insert them um, into other application. I guess you don't know how to do this. One other option I actually want to show you is the copy to clipboard one. You can either copy all notes Or select one. Uh, if you would have now selected only parts of the notes, we could choose that option. So I click on copy all notes. Now Atlas kind of puts it onto the clipboard. You just saw um, the blinking. And I have an um, empty document now. And I can paste the network view. But if you just paste the network view, then I get the network view as text. So we don't want to do that. Yeah, I just did Control V. Um, that's actually what I wanted to show you. What you need to do, because probably you're in the habit of co copy and paste, you need to go to the well, one. This is a, a German word now, but this is paste. Uh, and I guess most of you will have um, Windows uh, 2007, 2010. Now we have even 2013. So it's under the Start option, and then we have Paste and then you have paste special in English. So when you click on paste special, then you do get an option now to actually just put in the formatted text, the RTF, that's the control V option, or the bitmap. So uh, device independent bitmap usually gets the best quality. Um, so in English it's device independent bitmap um, or Windows meta file sometimes it's also called depending on your setup. And now we have our network here in Word. Yeah, you can also add it to PowerPoint. You can reduce the size, maybe do a bit more word art uh, to add some circles, arrows, uh, whatever, or also add it to a graphic program if you want to do some additional um, editing on this. Yeah, so this is how you actually would get the network into another application. Sorry, I want to save this now here. Yeah, so to recap, what I've shown you is how to add um, objects here to a network. Basically, I started out with a manager and opened a network view on, um, on some selected codes. You can do that in other managers as well. We also showed, well, I showed the import node option um, here via the main menu and um, and I told you that you can also drag and drop objects from the margin area um, now I showed you as well how this works if I close the network view now Atlas will ask me whether I want to save it when I say yes what it saves is it is that image here the links we have created, they are already saved. I mean, I have to save with the HU, but the, these linkages between the two objects, these will be saved with the HU file. If you don't want that image, 
then you don't have to click, um, so you don't have to confirm um, to, to save it now. Um, please remember this code now, happiness and joy, and let's add these extended code labels. So now we see we have linked three objects to it. So now these numbers go up. Yeah, we have the density three now here and the one. Yeah. So we have seen this image now. I close the network. I do is click on save now. Yes, yeah, save this network view. And uh, name of test net view. And by the way, um, we always say networks, but the official right name would be network view because basically Atlas HU file, so your project file, is a big, big network because you have been linking codes to lots of objects, to memos, to quotations. Um, so the HU is a very big network and now what we're creating are just insights, like little views into the big uh, network that is your project. So now I've saved this network view. If um, and we can find save network view either here under the network view button, and then we can open the image as we have seen and saved it. They also have the network view manager where you have these objects. What's a nice function actually here is a view option. I mean, this is a tile view already, but now I can add a preview size and make it large, for example, and then we get. Um, little preview images or um, jumbo and yeah then it's more recognizable and if you have uh, take uh, Godzilla then you even have full kind of view of and you see um, how your network view looks like. We can um, write a comment on your network view to describe it. Yeah you can add comments uh, to the network view um, to yeah to say what this is all about and and what you have visualized here so this is the comment field as you know also from other windows um, in Atlas so remember here the tile view and plus and the preview size if you want to see little preview images and not just the text uh, for the network So now I ask you to remember that code that we have now we have created links for it's a happy one. The happiness joy one, we have three links. So I can actually open a network on this code now. And now the default kind of layout directions come in. So Atlas pops up all the linked objects, but only the directed linked one. So this looks different than the network we have saved. It shows up the direct linked code to the survey one and also the memo that is linked um, to the happiness and joy code but this is yeah you can always visualize the links that was an atlas saves these links here um, but if you want to save the view you have to save the network view so if i say i'm close now atlas will ask me say now discard changes um, i don't want to save this view i only wanted to kind of see which which are the codes linked uh, to this code so let's actually um, save this um, project now and um, I have some links now so I save it under a different name. So now the network view um, image is saved and the linkages I have created are also saved. So what is, um, yeah, let me pop this up again. I mean, what, what is often asked for is that, you know, why these numbers uh, uh, don't grow here, why you work with Atlas. So as we have seen now, these numbers only go up if you link codes to each other in network views. So if you do it um, yourself and you decide how codes are linked, so Atlas doesn't do anything automatically here. These are, the density only goes up if you link codes uh, to each other. What um, I can also show you, um, I will get back to that a bit um, later, I'm opening the, the um, Prime Document Manager now, and um, if I open up a document in a network view, then we can 
have a preview of the document. That's a display option, so we have full image for PDs, or we can only um, show it as a node without the preview um, image. And that's actually quite nice for um, yeah, if you work with images or PDF, of, yeah, you also see the layout of the, the PDF document or in the Word, if it's a Word document, um, yeah, you see the first page. So that's sometimes a nice option um, in network views if you have room and if you don't uh, actually use too many objects in a network view. It's just as a visual um, add-on that's possible. So now I don't want to save these. Okay, we'll get back to uh, the network views also on codes and what's possible and also on what's, uh, what can be done. Um, this, uh, this primary documents and why you would uh, possibly have them in a network view. Let's, let me show you one more thing. I have one code family here. And um, I can also open a network on a code family. That's a weak link um, network. Yeah, I just want to show it because I've been uh, talking about this before and it wasn't in the PowerPoint. So this is now code family or codes for definition of happiness. And Atlas brings in all of the codes belonging um, to um, that family that have been added here and you see these are linked immediately by our red lines and they are not named so we have a weak link relation i i mean this is a kind of a nice display of uh, you know a, a group of codes or ones for for categories for example once you start building categories and uh, and imagine um uh, your code book and it's not like a, a long list of of text with definitions you can also add an image of these are the codes of that category and as I showed you before, copy and paste uh, your um, category image basically um, into your code book and then you have some visual aspects here as well and for others it's easier to grasp this than just the written text on code and definitions. It's just a, an application of um, code families and what you might want to do with those in network views. Now let's move on to the next main topic here is working with hyperlinks. And when you work with hyperlinks, you work actually on the data level. So there's no need actually to code. You can just simply create quotations in Atlas. Well, these happen to be coded, but they don't have to be coded. Yeah, quotation three, well, it's also coded with code B, but there's no need in Atlas to actually code a quotation. Yeah, and well, codes always collect similar meanings. So quotation two and three have similar meanings because they're coded with the same code. Um, but you can also link on the data level. Yeah, so quotation one supports quotation three. These contradict to each other. You can link within documents. You can link across documents. Um, for example, if you have an interview and somebody te tells you something in the first five minutes of the interview and, and uh, further down it says something completely different, as it sometimes happens, yeah, they can even link the two statements, um, calling it contradicts. Or if somebody tells you the, t the same issue ten times, maybe you don't want to co code it ten times because then also the code frequency goes up. And if it's no additional information, you can just link it, link these quotations to each other as repetition, for example. And not coding it or not linking it may also give a false impression if you code, code it only for the first time because it might be an important issue for that person. That's why it's repeated so often. So we see hyperlinks here and you can actually um, kind of capture that phenomenon. Um, another option, for example, is also to link um, an interview with a video or with an image. Yeah, if you do photo elicitation, you give people photos, they talk about it, you have your interview transcripts and you can link back to the photo or the image they have been talking about or if they have been commenting on a video or something. Yeah, So you can link these different data sources to each other as well. 
Let's do move on to some of the technical issues behind linking. Um, yeah, we see a hyperlink network now where you can link, as we've already seen, uh, quotations to each other in a network view. Um, and again, this can also include other objects here like codes, but um, I will show you also how to link on the data level. Yeah, so we have already seen how this actually works in a network view. And for that, we need to know about stars and chains. Yeah, you can actually create a chain link. So it starts with quotation two, three, and that's the source quotation. Then we have a first target, 3.5. And then this target quotation turns into a source quotation and you continue to link um, this assert quotation and um, so on. So this is a chain or what I just call a chain. A star link, we have one central quotation, that's our source and it links to a number of targets. And we'll see that in action uh, in the software. And yeah, in terms of you know, familiar, or in case there's a symbols, an audio quotation, this has a comment, a textual quotation with a comment, this is a Google Earth quotation. We've seen video quotations um, before as well. Yeah, so that's basically the two um, kind of additional information about hyperlinks that you can work with stars and chains. So now I'm back um, in Atlas TI and actually I'm taking out the code out of the view now. So I right clicked in the margin area and select the object type and I actually don't want to see codes and memos. I only want to see hyperlinks. Yeah, so hyperlinks are also displayed here in the margin area. So we have one here. You see there's this quotation icon. Um, and um, we get uh, some symbols here up front as well. I open the quotation manager and I can also filter for linked quotation. Show you how they look like in the quotation manager. And so I've been talking about targets and sources. So if you have this kind of triangle, um, this is a source, so it's starting, and this is a target pointing to that quotation. And you can also, in terms of um, a chain, we have this as a um, source and a target. So this actually um, continues. We also have the source and target. Yeah? Source, source, source links and target links. And you, you can also visualize it just by selecting one clicking on the network view and here well, we have like a combination of um, star and this is source and target yeah. here we have our chain connection here this is pointing from here to here contradicts from here to here contradicts now yeah. and then it has some star links um, here as well. As before, you can go and display in context. I can vi visit um, that quotation in context here as well. Mm. Close this now. Yeah, and yeah, you can see all these linkages here in the margin area. So we looked at uh, now at what these uh, symbols um, here mean in that you can um, actually visualize also your hyperlinks in network views and now actually I show you how to create it on the data level. Uh, let me take P3 again, a long document. Um, so I want to link that quotation to any other quotation within the same document here. So I highlight it, right click, say create link source. So nothing much happens apart from that Atlas writes at the bottom of the screen start anchor defined. Now we can move to any other position in the text, highlight the quotation again and say create link target. 
And now we have this list of relations and say for example criticizes. Here now you see we can star, chain or quit linking. Let's create a little chain now and I can move on and if we want to link it to something which is not already a quotation yeah well you can highlight that whatever you want to link it to and um, then others will uh, create a quotation from this yeah you see a new um, quotation was created and um, then here we say justify and now we quit linking yeah, so this is uh, linking directly on the data level within one document. So now I can double click and I can say click to visit. Double click, click to visit. Or also I can hold down the control key. That's just hyperlinking um, in, yeah, like you just click click on the link and I'll go to the criticizes one yeah um, and like in in uh, yeah if you're online somewhere you click on a link here if you just double click you see the text and you can click inside uh, to visit the actually context um, or you hold down the control key and double click and then you jump like you would double click on a link um, on a web page for example then of course you can also link across if you want to uh, link it to a different document you just load a different document and then link it yeah so it doesn't have to be um, within a document but if you link across documents um, you may actually want to also uh, open them side by side so if I want to link um, this quotation now to a quotation P5, I open it next to each other. And then I can also close this, I have some more space. I can also drag and drop the quotation. It needs a bit of, yeah, I need to take grab it so it has this icon. And as soon as if I'm on another quotation, yeah, so you need this to see them more sponsor changing and move it onto another quotation and select um, a relation. Yeah, so I now use the multi region view um, to actually uh, link here on the screen side by side. And if I close it and double click across documents and it opens it in a second region so if I have this is p5 this is p4 so if I then click the option click to visit if it's not within one document uh, this opens the two documents side by side and you can um, see the quotations directly um, next to each other so it's actually quite nice new possibility with the multi region option in Atlas TI. Yeah, that's um, basically what I need to show about hyperlinking. So you link on the on the data level, and um, I don't have a, an image document in this one. Um, but I have, should have one in the library uh, from. So from the uh, sample project and so I added now Abraham Lincoln so the same you know if you wanted to link this quote to a text segment yes yeah, works in the same way um, you can highlight bits and pieces of your audio video uh, and so on and link across or do the uh, right click create source target uh, option so we have one more point left here um, in our list of topics the analytic capabilities of network views and I will show 
some examples now on how to utilize them for analytical purposes. Here in this example project I have prepared a special code family and we have seen this family before and I call it uh, research question one, uh, definition of happiness and the question here that I want to explore is if there's a difference between families who have children and families who don't have children. Do they define happiness in any in a different way? Um, yeah, because we have these, um, yeah, in this data we have um, blog posts and that's why we would ha need to we have to code uh, the respondents who have children who don't have children. Maybe let me just uh, show you that uh, in the blog. So if you have interview data, maybe that does what work with PD families. So that would be a different issue. Yeah, but each blog post is called with those code attributes. Yeah, this is a female and she has children. Um, this is um, a male. It's a young child, a daughter, and it's a one child family. So as we have blog posts, we cannot work with PD families because we have over 100 contributions here in this document. So we have to code for those. So that's why um, yeah, we have like a, it's a question relating codes to variable type information, but in this t data set, we need to actually code for that information. So there are various ways of actually um, answering that, that question. One way would be uh, the co occurrence um, table explorer, but that would be the uh, webinar on uh, analysis tools. Um, here I want to show you how to actually answer this question with the help of the network view function where approaching the answer. If I, um, yeah, I, there's an option of importing codes or diff different objects on, on um, actually. And, um, and if, I, if I do it um, without setting a filter, I will get lots and lots of codes in my network and so maybe I should show this first and then you kind of understand the option of filtering. So from the coding here, well the attribute codes are always coded with the content codes. So it's a co-occurring uh, question when we have an um, uh, import co-occurring option in a network view. So if I open a network view on families who have children and it's already yeah, I don't need this memo for now, so I remove this memo from view. And we have an option here, import co-occurring code. So all the codes that overlap in the margin area that are also applied here. So if I use this option without setting a filter, well, we get a pretty picture. It's going to take a while because it's now querying all the data, importing all codes that co-occur with the code have children. So, and if I use um, the semantic layout, that's kind of a nice option to distribute codes uh, equally in a network view. Um, yeah, it's kind of lots of things on top of each other. Yeah, and the ones I have linked already. So basically, mm, that's not, not very meaningful to import core current codes without um, setting filters. So we just quickly close this and discard changes. So I need to set this family as global filter. So if I now do the same importing codes, it only imports the codes um, that are now in the current filter. And it imports these codes. And now I know that those who have children have defined happiness in these various ways and I link these codes now to my attribute code. And um, Yeah, I could use quite a new relation called define now, but I'm just leaving this as associated with for the moment. Yeah, uh, this is different definitions of. So this is just to, to kind of, for me to um, to capture that the, those who have children 
define happiness in these five different ways. So we close this network. I'm going to save this now. This is only to see which codes actually also co-occur. So I do, I do the same thing now for those who don't have children. Import co-occurring. So now we see that those who don't have children have a less variety of defining happiness in the context of children. Um, <coughs> I also link it, link it to each other. So now I want to actually bring these um, two together to see the difference. So I drag drop my have code in here. So immediately chose the linkages so that I already have created. And then I import um, the other linked um, codes. That I have linked before. Optimizing my screen now. So, what I see here now is that parents and non parents define happiness as meaning fulfillment, and it's, that is a very subjective feeling. And that those who have children also see it as a state of mind, as a long term view, and define this also as a feeling. So as I showed you before, I can also access the quotations behind here, read the data behind the network, which is also important, not just seeing which codes um, are applied. And then I can link these two to each other. And this is where I created my um, its difference between. See now, this, I don't see the, um, the menu here. Actually, I'll just drag it a bit. Difference between that we have seen I do it quickly now. Um, they have seen this in, in my PowerPoint before and it's symmetric. Apply. I now I have my first little story. I can tell the difference between parents and non-parents with regard to how they define happiness. Yeah, and um, now I should read the quotation behind it, um, write my memo um, on it and uh, yeah, so that it should query the data, read the data behind it, not just working uh, with your codes, but it gives you a first um, impression. Now, of course, I also want to uh, save this network, uh, research question one. Um, difference between parents and, I call them non-parents, but child is um, with regard to if happiness make it a bit shorter here yeah so this is uh, one way of um, now utilizing network views um, for analytic purposes um, the, but the difference between version 6 and version 7 is here that we cannot just import all neighbors, all common neighbors. That was the version 6 option. We can now also set we want only codes, only memos, only quotations, or only families. So we have a differentiation now, which wasn't there before. Plus, we can work with filters. Yeah, filters did not have an effect in version 6 um, on the network view at all. So you could set any filters you want. Um, they didn't um, affect network views and that's why this becomes now a meaningful option um, to do. To just add um, one more example to this, I'm taking the um, the um, parenting, the Belkin's parenting blog and the New York magazine blog and add them to a network because now we have seen these uh, gray lines before um, we can also ask which codes do actually occur in a particular document or which codes do not occur. Again, without setting any filters, 
we wouldn't get any um, meaningful answers. We need just a pretty network with lots of colorful codes uh, in here, but uh, that wouldn't mean anything. Yeah, Being, um, Using filters now, we can also say, okay, which of these um, uh, definition happiness is a difference between the two blocks um, in terms of defining um, happiness. And um, yeah, we would... I just leave this family now, just create another family in a second as an example. So now we can actually import code um, neighbors here as well. And we see immediately um, which codes occur here in the two documents, but we have to do this on the other document as well and see, okay, we have one code here and um, yeah, we don't need the So we see that these codes occur in both documents and happiness is a state of mind is only mentioned in the New York Times blog, um, for example. Yeah, and let's um, and remove the global filter, remove global filter, show all codes. And for example, I have an effects of parenting category here, effects of parenting, and then we can also now uh, compare um, the, the two documents again, Bell Kent's in New York Times blog, whether they talk about different effects of parenting, maybe also give you an idea of the dynamics of blocks. Um, you know, some person says something, another report, a response, and um, and and then yeah, maybe a, a topic evolves or it doesn't evolve. But again, we see very similar. Uh, we have the dark orange ones are the negative aspects of parenting. Um, people talk about we have the positive ones, and we have. The career option, yeah, so that's actually, it didn't, didn't occur very often uh, at all, but this is only an op uh, a topic that probably because one person talked about it, some uh, two pe people responded. So that aspect we only have in the Belkin Parenting blog, and it didn't come up in the New York Times um, blog. Yeah, so it's an easy way to compare uh, what has been, uh, with the difference between the respondents. So if you do a case-based analysis and I think you can imagine or can kind of uh, come up with some ideas about your own data and how you can compare and contrast uh, groups um, or documents and, and difference between the documents. Yeah, so this is a new option also in version um, 7 to import codes specifically on primary documents and we get these gray semi-lines here um, to indicate which code occur and doesn't occur. The last issue I want to um, talk about is uh, the issue about code hierarchies that people always ask about. How do we actually get, um, yeah, can structure and sort our codes in Atlas because of the flat code list and the code manager? Well, if you have seen my codes already, you get an idea actually in how to add a structure also to a flat code list in Atlas. But um, as we um, we're talking about network views, well, you could of course imagine uh, writing your codes as is a, um, you know, all the subcodes to um, whatever your category code or main code or whatever you want to call this and utilize the network view function for structuring and sorting your code list. Well, and then um, that my uh, that uh, shows up in the um, code forest or code tree in, in Atlas TI, and then you can also use that for, for drag drop um, coding if you wanted to. I usually ad ad advise against doing that because then you use a network view function for simply structuring and sorting your code list, and you can do it otherwise. Because what do you want to do next? You used up the network view function, used relation like is, is part of, um, is property of, um, 
But the interesting bits basically happen across categories. And that's what I would leave the network function view, uh, function for, linking across the different aspects. Now we have something here on the election process, as another example, data set and the political program. So when in the election process, what were different aspects of a program introduced, which language style, this is a, like media reports, is, is used to actually show this and how is Schwarzenegger, re Schwarzenegger represented. So if you know some, um, I use this in my, my Atlas book, the Schwarzenegger um, example, when he was elected governor in, in California. So that is actually the, um, uh, the example data from the book Qualitative Data Analysis with Atlas TI. And just talking about it, I'm currently working on the second edition, with, um, which will feature version 7 of Atlas TI to be released in January of 2013, so next January. Um, so you can still use the current uh, version. What doesn't apply is uh, the project and data management. But all the stuff on networks, um, that's um, still uh, the same in, in, in version 7, more or less, apart from the analytical functionality. Um, this basic idea is that, um, yeah, that you use a network view function for conceptual type relations, so what happens across your different categories and not just using the network view function to display your descriptive, um, yeah, just a description of the data, um, what is the higher and lower order code. Um, and, um, and then I, I actually do show this in, in Atlas now. I prepared um, a special little uh, project here because one of the um, um, things that, that's happening if if, if you just utilize the uh, network view function, that you will have your codes here. Atlas orders the codes in alphabetic order. Yeah? Um, and then, well, this is kind of all effects of, of parenting uh, top subcodes. We could bring them in uh, to a network view. So my main code here is that one. And we can all link it in one go. And say is a so that's what you have seen in the PowerPoint presentation. So now we have just linked it um, in a structural um, type of way. Now we don't want to save this network here. Um, let's take the uh, definition of, of, of happiness one, um, but I take out the, um, the family codes um, here and they to do here for this example. Yeah, so these are all different definitions of happiness. And I do have the higher order code here as well. So do the same thing. Link the subcodes to the higher order code. So now these are linked, but I still, apart from me, I didn't take out all of it. Um, here it's, you see actually by the colors with which actually the codes actually belong to a category that I had before. The list is alphabetic, uh, sorted alphabetically, so we have the codes all over the place. So linking it to each other in a network view doesn't really um, help us in any way to get our code list here structured and sorted. Um, and if we actually move back to the yeah here you see that we have sorted all codes by their main code by adding a prefix here so having definition of happiness effects of parenting or reasons for having children and reasons for not having children so sometimes um, yeah you um, can work with uh, abbreviations here, having HC for having children and HC for not having children. So do, do not make the, the code uh, too long. But here we have all the sources of happiness. Yeah, so there, these are, this is now a structured and sorted code list. Um, and, um, and we can also find our way around by clicking on S and we are all at our source of happiness uh, codes. And let's, um, and here you have this as an example as a stage uh, two project 
and here we also have um, oh I have grouped all of the um, the categories also into to families here for easy access so the, the families are not basically you can represent categories via your families and um, then use them for filtering purposes um, and you see some of these are other families for different purposes so a family is not necessarily a category but let me open this wider now um, <clears throat> and um, they give you kind of nice and easy access uh, to the codes of a particular uh, group um, and that would also be the case if you would use a network view function to do so you can still work with families but you don't have the sorted and nice structured list um, here that's why my recommendation is to use a code manager to add a structure to your code list work with prefixes symbols numbers letters so the alphabetic order um, that kind of rep represents your structure and don't work with um, the network view function and let me get back to the this other project where it's still kind of all over the place um, you do have the um, it's under miscellaneous um, here I'm off the screen now um, I can do it also from here miscellaneous code forest so the code forest does uh, show you um, all codes and if you have linked them via transitive relations then you get this hierarchy maybe what you're looking for effects of parenting as we did yeah but here let's see I can't we are also properly used uh, we only use transitive relations let's see what we did here yeah and if we if you don't use transitive relations then we get of course a repetition here because if, if, if you have a, a non-directed um, link then this we have a, a cross references so the code for us is not a strict hierarchical display it is a display of all relations that you have created directed and non-directed uh, relations and the asymmetric ones here actually um, behave um, in the rep repetitive way like uh, symmetric relations you would only get like a, a pure hierarchical view if you only use transitive relations and then we would be at the descriptive level again because the meaning the conceptual meaning is across relations is across the, the green and the orange and the blue and the pink whatever category here um, and and it's not just the up down uh, type relation so it's an option to you can also drag drop coding here from the code forest and I know there are teams who are doing it um, but I give you some you know I've given you some reasons why I'm not recommending it uh, to do it like that um, because you do lose the order in the code manager um, and you use the conceptual um, level of working simply um, it's as simple as that so my recommendation is work with prefixes here use the network view function uh, for conceptual level and analytical work as add-on uh, after the descriptive level work of coding and if you're interested in that and want to read more about that this is all described in the book in greater um, detail so I hope this has given you an insight on how to work with the network view function in Atlas TI and I hope you can put it to good use in your own work goodbye